What you think you're doing? I'm dropping them off. You're good. good. Listen, I met a younger guy. And oh he don't want no God. kids. And oh he don't want to, listen, he don't want to deal with them. And so I'm dropping these kids off so many of them can live our life. We want to travel. We want to explore the world. And I can't do that with kids. This is so incredibly sad and incredibly disgusting. Disgusting. Well, it comes from this breaking of the first commandment. There's a God and it ain't you. And when we think we can acquire things that make us happy, then we literally turn ourselves into a type of deity and all sacrifices should be done according to us. And if it makes us happy, then we almost in a sense don't need God. Welcome to the Father Leo Show, where I'm dishing out faith, culture, and commentary. And in this episode, we are going to have a seasonally Lent discussion, and it's all about renunciation. But before we jump into that, please make sure you click subscribe, like this video, make your comments, and also share it with family and friends. And please, in this conversation, we're gonna sincerely ask you to consider being a part of our Patreon community. With only $5 each month, you're gonna get access to a ton of content. And more importantly, you're gonna help us to continue to provide a real authentic Catholic pastoral approach to the problems of our world. And so let's just jump right into it with a conversation and my comments about faith and renouncing worldly possessions. It is quite clear that this Lenten season really challenges us, many of us, because it, it, it makes us give things up to spend more time in prayer, to give up food, you know, with this idea of fasting and abstinence, but also almsgiving because almsgiving is a way to say to God that my, my, my material possessions are not as important as actually caring for the poor. And so this idea of renouncing things, it's a, a difficult conversation to have because our world just wants people to continue to have more and more of anything. But I think in order for us to understand renunciation, which is a spiritual practice for spiritual perfection, we've got to obviously dig deep into what Scripture says, and you don't have to go far. I mean, there is just so much stuff on what Scripture says regarding giving up worldly possessions. Probably the most important is Matthew chapter 6, and Jesus says, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin can destroy and thieves can break in and steal, but store for yourselves treasure in heaven where moths and vermin can't destroy, where thieves can't steal. And then, you know, in Luke's gospel, Jesus will say clearly, watch out, be on guard for any type of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. And then if you just go deeper into the New Testament, you'll have very things, very important um, teachings from the early Christian church. One example is going to be 1 Timothy, where he says, those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. And over and over again, we see what, what is it for, the, for us to gain the whole world, but to lose our soul in the process. It really is something we've got to take seriously because when we hold on to the things of the world, then we can't actually hold on to the things of heaven. And why do we say this? Because now we're going to jump right into what the world, what the world says about, about material wealth and pleasures. And it's actually very, very sad. Here's my commentary on what the culture says, which is the exact opposite of renunciation. The video that I'm going to show you is very sad. It's gone on the internet and it's, it's about a mom who's just wanting to drop off her children at her mom's house, so the kid's grandparents' house, and she just wants to leave them all there so that she can live a worldly life. This is sad, but this is very true. Sadly, check this out. Hey, babies. Wait, don't, don't go in the house here. Why not? Hey, listen. Go on to, just go sit on the porch. Hey, listen, 
What do you think you're doing? I'm dropping them off. You're good. Listen, I met a younger guy. Oh he don't want no God. kids. And oh he don't want to, listen, he don't want to deal with them. And so I'm dropping these kids off so me and him can live our life. We want to travel. We want to explore the world. And I can't do oh that with kids. My God. I can't. I cannot believe. It's time for me to be happy. And I just want to be happy and stress-free without these children. That's all I want. Then you should ask me, baby. I shouldn't have asked. You're the grandparents. It's respect, Angel. It's respect. Well, I hope that you respect my decision on moving on my life with my new man and no kids. I'm not raising your kids. No, I'm not either. Well, I, I don't know what to tell you because I'm not doing it. I'm just letting you know right now I'm not doing it. These are good for three kids. I'm tired. I'm tired of being a single parent. I'm tired. I know that that is incredibly disturbing to watch, but that happens more and more. And it's this inability to not give up pleasures and to take on sacrifices that lead to this entitled mentality that the thing that's going to make her happy is being able to travel with her younger man who doesn't want kids. This is, the, this is so incredibly sad and incredibly disgusting. But where does this come from? Well, it comes from this breaking of the first commandment. There's a God and it ain't you. And when we think we can acquire things that make us happy, then we literally turn ourselves into a type of deity and all sacrifices should be done according to us. And if it makes us happy, then we almost in a sense don't need God. This is obviously rooted in the entitled mentality of, of you're not going to like this, but in, in basic contraception mentality. This is rooted in a contraceptive mentality, a mentality that says, I have the right to tell God when I should have a baby. And I know that you're going to think, okay, what's the, what's the, the connection here? Well, again, it's a breaking of the first commandment. When a, man, uh, when a man and a woman engage in a sexual act, they need to be open to life. And guess what that is? That is a renunciation of self because that means when they are open to life, then they are taking on a responsibility, an ability to respond to what God is going to give to them next, which is going to be children. And in this case, you hear that here's a woman who wants to get rid of her kids it's just so that she can have the material and physical pleasures of a relationship with a younger man who doesn't want kids because somehow kids are going to be seen as a hindrance to what material possessions and physical pleasures. And yet in a way that's true. It's very much true. Kids make you poor. Kids make you um, think twice about gauging in a sexual act. But you can see when people don't renounce this, the spirit of entitlement, then they think that they deserve to be pleased. They deserve to be treated like some sort of, I don't know, epicenter for pleasure, a type of a, of a false understanding of a God. And so this idea of not willing to give things up leads to this mentality. And yes, the contraceptive mentality is a part of that. We are contra the conception of God in my life, and therefore I become my own God. The contraception mentality is exactly what leads to the murder of unborn children in abortion. Because there you basically say, a child is going to make me poor. It's going to get in the way of my personal happiness. You, you, can see, you can see where we are in the world. This is a classic example of someone who doesn't know how to give something up of herself and as such takes on a desire, an insatiable desire for personal pleasure. So it's a very sad thing. We, we don't have to look far at examples of people who just want to acquire more and more and more.
And it's very challenging that our world is uh, preaching that materialism is a good thing because it goes exact opposite of what God is saying to us. You know, again, faith doesn't say that material possessions are bad, but they just have to be seen as a utility to a higher end, a, a greater purpose, something that can actually build up the kingdom of God rather than literally destroying it. I mean, I only showed you a clip here of this mom trying to give up her children when she really should be renouncing her own desires so that she can sacrifice for her children. And I get it. She's tired of being a single mother. I don't know what happened to her husband, but I can tell you that if he walked out on her family, on his family, it's only because he was seeking material wealth and physical pleasures. That's just all there is to it. You know, when you get married, you actually renounce all things. And so actually, let's jump into my commentary on renunciation and how we can actually make it something very practical for us in this Lenten season. Here's my commentary on renunciation. Renunciation is all about dying to self. You see, when you get married, whenever you perform a particular act, you actually are experiencing a, a death to self. You have made a decision. And this word decision is rooted in a mentality of, are you willing to die to yourself? And so what I want to do is play a little clip, a commentary, and it's a pretty impressive video about what it means to die to self. And this is coming from something called The Last Rebellion. Something uh, my producer sent this to me, and I'm just going to show you a little clip because it's really about what it takes to renounce all things for the kingdom. The last true rebellion is death to the world. To be crucified to the world and the world to us. The seed of dissatisfaction deeply planted in the heart of today's society, rebellion has been a small key to unlock the doors of change. But the rebellion that the world has known is not a fullness of true rebellion. Since our times have come to a point where things can't get much worse, the few remaining lovers of truth must search deeper into themselves and deeper into truth itself. But to get to this point, a revolution must take place. A revolution in the hearts of these lovers of truth. A revolution that annihilates all earthly and worldly thinking, and that nurtures a way of thinking that is not of this world. Because that which is of the flesh is of the flesh, and that which is of the spirit There is a grave necessity for this internal revolution, for only by this progress can be made. For how can one help a world with festering wounds until one mends one's own wounds? After this spiritual surgery has taken place, true rebellion is an ideal that is attainable. is some serious reminder that you can't help a world's festering problems if you yourself haven't fixed your own problems. This is something that we don't want to admit, that we always, we, we want to fix everything else, but we actually don't fix ourselves because we're not willing to renounce ourselves. Greta Thunberg, yeah, I'm going to go there. She's incredibly annoying to me because she says that she can fix the world if we just listen to her. But she herself hasn't given up a dime, much less lifted a finger to actually clean up anything that she says needs to be fixed. I mean, she is so wealthy, she could actually donate so much of her money and organize a team of people, and she'll make even more money. But literally give up her time, renounce her own self, 
and organize a team of people and clean up a river in India. I would take her more seriously, but she is a person who just accumulates wealth and doesn't actually make any personal sacrifices, which is part of renunciation. You see, when you make a decision, a part of you dies. Let me explain, because the word decision comes from the Latin words de cidere, cidere or cidere, and, and that's the verb cidere, to, that means to kill. So if you commit a homicidere, you commit homicide, a sui cidere, suicide, killing of self. De cidere, you kill an issue. So when two people get married, they make a decision. Everybody else who they loved or could love, they're kind of dead to them now. That's the power of a decision. You know, in Congress, there used to be a phrase when they used to work, they would say, kill a bill, which basically means make a decision. When you engage in a sexual act, you are, in a sense, killing off the decision to be pure or to be um, without a child. Like, I, again, I look at that example of the previous video where this woman made a decision. She knew she'd have kids. So guess what? A part of her must die so that her children can live. But what you see her doing is the exact opposite. She'd rather just kill off the idea of her children. We're renouncing the wrong things. We're renouncing the good things. And we're accepting the, the material possessions, which will corrupt, which will die. You know, there's a, a great example of renunciation. Dolores Hart, she is, uh, she, she is a Benedictine nun. She was born in 1938. She's an American icon, a Hollywood actress. And uh, she was actually in a movie, Loving You, with Elvis Presley. Um, she, she is known for having kind of like this first kiss with Elvis Presley. Well, guess what? She renounced all of that and she became a nun. And uh, at the height of her career, she left in order to join the Abbey of Regina Laudis Monastery in Connecticut. She's a a perfect example of renunciation where she truly gained an eternal kingdom because she was willing to renounce the world. Now, does this mean that everyone has to become a nun or a priest? No, because let's admit there are people who have given their life to God and they still have material possessions. And some of them might even still suffer with materialism or hedonism, just wanting physical pleasures. So, so, so it, being a nun isn't a guarantee that you're going to be spiritually perfect. Being a priest doesn't mean that I'm spiritually perfect. Far from it. You know, in fact, we have kind of more responsibilities, which is why we have to take very seriously ways that we can renounce these material things that can sometimes creep in and become our God and fool us to believe that we are God. So here are just some pastoral takeaways for you. What I'd like for you to do in this Lenten season is consider what do you know you have a lot of? And are you willing to give that away? You know, just do you have extra food? Are you willing to give that away? Do you have a lot in your bank account? Can you give some to the poor and support organizations? I mean, a lot of people think that just because I'm on TV and I travel the world that we have a lot of money. We do not have a lot of money because most of our money actually goes to supporting the food truck and, and people coming out of the prison system and, and, and giving food to the poor, especially in the winter season. And that's why we really sincerely need your help. You know, $5 a month, that's nothing. But it opens you up to a treasure trove of a lot of content and, and, and also supports us in our work that we do. So I'm kind of making a plea. If you've got a lot of it, share it with other people. And then also consider what you think you don't have enough of. Now, money aside, 
everyone can say that, oh, I need more money. But what do you think you don't have enough of? And even give a little bit of that away to other people. Where do I get this lesson from? From the old woman who only could offer two copper coins in the collection. And Jesus says she walks away justified simply because she gave not out of her excess, but out of her need. Mother Teresa is a perfect example where she will say, give until it starts to hurt. These are spiritual forms of renunciation. And then the third kind of thing that you can do is, is maybe not limit your fasting and your abstinence just to Fridays of the Lenten season. Consider doing something throughout the entire Lenten season. You know, just it could be something small, but done with great intention has a, an efficacious kind of principle and a merit. Um, I know some people give away chalk, get, get, get rid of chocolate, and that, that's perfectly fine. But how about doing away with all sweets altogether? You know, just going a little step further just in this season of Lent. And I guarantee you, you're going to realize, hmm, it's not that great anyway. I could have done without. Because there is going to come a time in our life when we will have to go without. We consider this the days of tribulation, trials and tribulation, where we will be put to the test. Will we have the spiritual stamina to be able to go without and to know that the only treasure that we really need in life is faith in God. So there are my commentaries on, uh, on this spiritual practice of renunciation. I certainly hope that this was helpful to you, especially in this Lenten season. Please make sure you let us know what you, you're thinking. Um, share this with family and friends. Make sure you leave comments so that we can help get the algorithms in our favor. So the more comments and the more views, the more likes and shares, the more other people who might not be familiar with our show, it'll pop up on their For You page and it definitely helps us out. And as always, thank you to our Patreon supporters. Honestly, without you, we can't do this and we actually need some more assistance. So please, in this time of Lent, consider being a support to us on our Patreon community. I guarantee you it's definitely worth it. But for now, thank you for watching. God bless you and stay hungry for God.